unanimously. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Item 8G is an item we discussed briefly when we were looking at, uh, uh, at items that we might not want to review today. Uh, the first item is item 8G1, and this would uh, allow the council to either approve or not approve of the uh, project order uh, for the MAPS 3 projects. Obviously, this has received a lot of attention. And we have two council people that are missing today. Um, Councilman Shadid has, uh, through Councilman uh, White, asked that this item be deferred. Uh, Councilwoman Salyer is asking that it not be deferred. And so uh, those two opinions expressed, as I just stated. Uh, what I'd like to do here is discuss the merits of a deferral. And so without getting too far deep into the, the idea itself, we discuss whether or not we want to defer the item. Otherwise, we'll go through a presentation and then defer an item, in which case we might want to have to have a presentation again. And it seems having a presentation on, on two separate meetings seems a little bit repetitive. And it would be nice to have the council people who are actually going to vote on that particular day, whether it's here today or in two weeks, available for the presentation. So with that, Councilman White opened up the discussion with the idea of a deferral. Why don't we give him a chance to, to speak on it? And um, as, as the math would have it, it would take four of seven votes to have this item deferred. If the item is not deferred, then we'll go through the presentation, and assumably at that, assumingly at that point, we'd have a vote. I, I received a call yesterday afternoon from Councilman Shadid, who uh, had a problem with a, a connection from an international flight and was in Boston and was not able to make uh, the flight connection to get to Oklahoma City. At that time, he told me that there was the only way he'd get to Oklahoma City was to expend four thousand dollars and drive tonight at night back from Dallas. And he very much wanted to be here when we did this. I told him that I would uh, advance. Um, I, I, to I told him I would advance his request for a continuance. Um, and I guess the first thing I'd want to know is, from the city manager, from your standpoint, uh, from the city standpoint. Uh, is there a uh, is a serious problem with the deferral of items uh, of item G? Well, we, we discussed the projection on. center yesterday, but, right. but uh, uh, right, we did. The uh, on, onto the program, we're we're looking for direction to go forward with it, and so that, so that's an item out there. Um, we've had. A fair amount of process from multiple presentations to council workshops and a presentation a few weeks ago. Um, you know, it's, it's a 10 year program um, uh, on this. We're anxious to get going on it. Uh, uh, two weeks, uh, you know, is not the end of the world on, on, on the program. It, it just seems to me that if we have even one council member, we talked, we talked about this earlier, that had made all kinds of plans to be here and is unable to do it, uh, that just as a matter of the kind of civility that we've operated under the past several years, that we, we ought to do it. And when there, there is no real, um, other than anxiousness, there is no other real uh, overriding concern about letting everybody be here and have their time at the microphone. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the problem with any deferral, especially for the reason of a council person missing, is that we don't know what circumstances might take place two weeks from now and, and cause another council person to miss. So we don't necessarily know, you know, who, who might be here then. And I, I think it's a slippery slope to start deferring items based simply on the fact that, that a council person who can't be here wants it. If there obviously are four votes for it, then that's the way it's going to be. Uh, but I think we ought to be clear about why we're doing it. And if, if that is justification of it on itself, I think that, that sets a precedent going forward that's going to be tougher to deal with on an individual basis. Um, well, well, Mayor, I, I, Pete, are you, are you, are you uh, in, in, cause you've been, you've been close on this issue. Are you anticipating um, a close vote on this item yes. if we hear the presentation? Yes. And so therefore, the people that are actually here to vote could make a difference one way or the other. Because I think, I think that's significant. If, but, if this might, were expected but, to be a unanimous vote, then it would be, I think it would be different than if we sensed that it might be a close vote. And it's obviously of extreme importance that, that the, the council have an opportunity to weigh in. And that this, this is about as important as item as we're going to deal with. To be perfectly candid, I think we have one person that will vote on one side of it and one person that will vote on the other. I mean, I wouldn't want to say that 
both those people are going to vote the same way, and therefore it would change the outcome. But I do think, as I said earlier, when we're, this is, the, this and the, and the decision uh, about the convention center are things that are, are going to, they're, they're not, they're not one week long implications. They're not one, they're not even 10 year long implications. They're 50 years long implications. So, I mean, you look at the, you look at where the, uh, what the decision that was made to locate the Civic Center, I mean the, 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 what is it now, the Cox. See, I was, I have to remember all the different names that things have been. But it's uh, the Cox Center, uh, that's a 50 year long decision. And it was a good decision. And, and, and so, uh, I'm not as concerned that we enter some kind of a slippery slope with regard to continuances because I think, all of us would resist continuances just for the purpose of delay. But I think if there's a valid reason, like someone has made every effort to be here and can't be here, uh, I would take that, I, 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 maybe this is something beyond what I should say, but I might take that personally, and I, I'm not sure I wouldn't take it personally. If I had made a phone call and said, I, for reasons beyond, out of my control, I can't be here. Uh, to me, that's different than just saying somebody, I want to continue because I want to try to figure out, I'm trying to love it to death. I want two more weeks in order to figure out how to beat it, or I want two more weeks, um, uh, which I will plan to use that two weeks for that purpose to some, to some extent, but, <laughs> but that's not the reason. That, that's not why. I, I know, but every one of us has missed a council meeting where we wish we'd have been able to be there and vote on something. I mean, that's, that's, that's not unusual. I haven't. Okay. Well, you know, I, I think that I have. We, we, we can't guarantee there will be 100% participation two weeks from now. I understand. The second thing is, this is not an, an item that there hasn't been an, an opportunity for the people who are not here to express their feelings. They've done it over and over again, uh, and we know how Councilman Shadid feels, and I think we know how Councilman Sawyer feels. So to the extent that we've heard their discussions, their concerns, uh, they've had an opportunity to participate in this, although they haven't obviously won't have an opportunity to participate in the vote if we go forward with this. But we can't, I don't, I don't think, uh, it's a 10 year project, but we can't continually put it off because two weeks from today, there's no guarantee that somebody will be gone and, and, and whoever's gone will be postponed again. And so I think the longer this thing dangles in front of the community, the, the, the more the community feels there is a division on this council that they should be concerned about. And I think we've had a, a lot of discussion, a lot of opportunities by everybody around the horseshoe to express their feelings about the, the, the changes in the schedules. Uh, and I think uh, you having said that, uh, and without the guarantee that we can have 100% participation two weeks from now, I would say that we don't need to defer this. Okay. Mayor. Yes, good. In all due respect to, to both councilmen, you know, this is, as stated, a 10-year project. I don't understand why two weeks or four weeks or eight weeks would make that drastic difference in reference to a project that's a 10-year project. It just seems as if that we are act as if that we got something over our heads that either we got to move now or we're going to sink. And I don't see that the case. We know that the money is being collected. The money is being secured. The design has been presented. But at the same time, it still has to come to this council, and the ultimate decision is with us. It should be, if you're talking about whether or not we're divided or not, we are divided. It's a common fact that people look at us every Tuesday, and they hear the debates on one issue or the other. And it's true. You have some of us that believe that things should go one way. We have some that believes that it should go another way. But what we're really talking about but here is the deferral. I mean, we're well, but, but even with the deferral, 
if we got to be looked at as being divided because we're asking for two weeks on a basis that has been justified because, well, I say justified, at the request of one councilman, at the non-request of another councilman, but at the same time, when you talk about this whole process, how many, how many special meetings have they had? How many meetings have they counseled under the subcommittees? How many have they counseled? How many have they had to come up in less than almost 48 hours and call a special meeting? So why is the people who has the last say-so or in reference to what goes forward and when it goes forward, why can't we at least respect each other and say, we need some additional time. That's the only thing I can understand. I'm, I'm just listening at this point. All right, Larry? Well, we've talked about civility and respect. I think we have an obligation to respect the people, the citizens, who have donated their time on the subcommittees and on the oversight committee. And I think a number of them are here today. Uh, I'm going to vote to move ahead. I think we, we need to move ahead. And uh, that's my comment. Okay. Yeah, David? This is a question on the procedure, just a quick one. Mm -hmm. Would we take the first option and, and vote on it, and if it passed, then that's it? Or do we, the fact that we've got two options to consider, how will that take place? Yeah, I, I think that's the next discussion we could have. That what I was trying to do now is decide whether or not we were going to defer. But I, I think I have a proposed procedure for that. but. Um, I, I don't think we're to that point yet. Okay. Any other comments or questions well, on the deferral? I, I, yeah. I will make one more comment. Yeah. And I, the idea that the subcommittees have all stood up and spoken is absolutely wrong. That's not the truth. One subcommittee meant before this decision was made. One. One. That was not vetted back through the other subcommittees. Now, I'm not asking us to do that. I'm just asking us to get two weeks, and, and so we can consider it. But, that, but that's not so. I mean, that's easy, nice to say that, but it's not so. The second thing, the fact that we have a split vote here doesn't mean this council's divided. It means we have difference of opinion on this issue. Once we get through this, this vote, we're not going to be divided. We're all going to be on the same team, pulling the rope, as we've always been or at least we've been since uh, since I've been back this time, and I'm, I'm sure I wasn't the catalyst for that. It's been going on longer than me. But uh, but so we're not divided in the sense that uh, that this makes us. I, I hope the public understands that this is this is a healthy discussion about what's going to happen in Oklahoma City the next 50 years, not 10 years, not two weeks, 50 years. These are big, big, big projects. And so if we move two weeks and have a discussion and have a vote, uh, some of us will be pleased, some of us will be disappointed, but everyone will have had the opportunity to have their say, and we'll go on down the road. Okay. Gary? Well, I'm glad to hear you say that we're all going to be... Well, I can only add for me. What Mayor spoke for himself. Well, I think, you're, I think you're exactly right. Yeah. But I can tell you that's not what that camera is showing to the people out there based on the comments I'm getting, because that, they are seeing a divisive council. And, and I, I'll agree with Skip that two weeks doesn't make any difference. Absolutely. But I also agree with Pat in that this is not the first time that we've had discussions on this. We had discussions on it in the workshop that we had. We had discussions on it every time that they come up and presented either the timeline or talked about the project, whatever it may be. So it's not that this hasn't been vetted. And my, my assumption, personal assumption, would be that deferring it two weeks, we're going to have the same people making the same arguments that they've made all the previous times, and, and it, it will move however it's going to move, and that would be the same vote that comes up today. I, at, I agree with Larry in the concept that we need to move on with this. Uh, having sit on the, in those subcommittee meetings now since I took over on that position, I can tell you that, that all the committees that like where they're at are happy with it and would agree that the timeline is there, and all of the committees that don't like where they're at on the timeline will never get happy with it. If that's, your, if that's the point you want to make to them, 
Are you happy with it? But I will also tell you, sitting on those subcommittees, that I don't believe the timeline is, is going to be um, substantially met anyway. The committees that want to discuss about the fact that they may that they move back a little bit aren't ready. I doubt that they'll be ready even in option one or two at some point in time. So we're we're creating a lot of discussion and a lot of dissension about something that I really don't think in the end run is going to make that much difference. And as I've said to all of the committees and I said on the advisory board also. The dynamics of the MAPS 3 projects means that whatever we set today, we can unset and change tomorrow. We do them by resolutions. And if something comes up that says, well, there's a, there's a group that's ready, and, but it's not their time yet, uh, is there any way to move forward? I'll bet you that that timeline can be changed if that's the situation. But I have yet to see a committee ready to go on the timelines, even that we're proposing at this point in time. Okay. While I respect the, the, um, the, the, the concept of um, honoring requests from council people, I think at some point in time we're tasked with, the, with the, uh, making that decision. And that's what this group does in the final end run. You've got all those subcommittees with all those people on it and the advisory board and so forth, but they look at us to make those hard decisions, and I think that that's what we're being tasked for. So uh, it, at this point in time, it would be hard for me to support uh, deferring it any longer. Okay. Pete, do you want to make a motion to defer? I move we defer to the next council meeting. Skip, I'm sensing you'll second that motion. All right. We're voting to defer item 8 g one or two. Cast your votes. And the deferral fails by a count of two, five.